This is the Sony KDL-V32X BR2 32-inch cold cathode fluorescent backlit LCD television. It has WCG white color gamut CCFL. I'll show you the badges uh, real quick. We'll talk about it and stuff like that. It's a Sony Bravia. So let's uh, go take a look at that. It's got a Bravia engine, white color gamut, CCFL, HDTV, HDMI. You know, we'll talk about that. It's got the elusive Sony brand name. You don't see too many of those anymore. And it is mounted on this stand. This stand is uh, adjustable for height, so I can raise and lower it. The top shelf contains the, or the stand is made by Dorpu. Had a video on that. There's a link in the prescription. On the very top, they call that a camera shelf. Uh, it happened to be just the right size to fit a Blu-ray player made by Tojok, which I reviewed. Link in the prescription. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that's sitting on top on the uh, lower shelf there. There's a cable box, a whole bunch of remotes, an Android TV box, HDMI switch box, and some other stuff as well, uh, which is uh, really helpful. But let's go take a look at the back of the TV first. And then, of course, we're going to turn it on and go through the whole thing. i got to go handheld for this shot because of the stand. There's a label back there. I can't read it. Maybe you can. I don't know. Uh, this here is a LED light strip that you put on the back. I wasn't ready to stick it down to the TV, so I just scotch taped it, which has sort of fallen off a bit. Um, meh. It just is. China sent me that, too. I don't even know what brand that was. Oh, we got inputs, people. We have inputs. S-Video, composite, there's component in there. There's VGA straight ahead with an audio in. And right next to that, if I can get my hand up in there, not really even. Well, it's it's here. That's where it is. It's got HDMI. That's the one HDMI it has. And I seem to remember there was a headphone jack on this somewhere as well. And I, I can't seem to locate that now. Maybe a better shot of the connections. There's not... The greatest lighting here. Here, here it is. Another S video connection, composite in headphone jack. Your coax. This has a um, NTSC tuner. I forget if it has ATSC. There's a service port, which appears to be USB. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, I don't know what they would plug into that or anything. Uh, this is old school stuff. That white sticker there I think has the date of manufacture, but the stand or the holder for it, whatever you call it, is blocking it. So unfortunately I can't get that. Now sitting on top of the cable box there is a soundbar from Woe Home. There's a link in the description to that as well. Uh, it works. It's it's good for for this. It's not great, but it's the best soundbar they ever sent me so far. So, you know, I use what I got. <laughs> this TV was from the old lady that I got Ginger from, the 03 V6 Camry. And the Lazy Boy chair that you've seen in many other videos. And had a video on that also. So, uh, yeah, it's all there. This was her TV. She watched this incessantly. 
I don't know the date of manufacture, unfortunately, but I can eventually show you the um, the power on hours it's had. Um, let me shut the lights out. Uh, there's going to be glare from the back window, but unfortunately it just is. There's nothing I can do about that. All right. Unfortunately, like I said, there is glare from the back window, but nothing I can do about that. With that said, let's go ahead and power it on. There is a click. And there you go. This is the Android TV box. Unfortunately, this particular color, yeah, you can see it better there. The camera is not doing justice to this, but on the right side of the clock and to the right of that, it's a little bit dimmer than the rest. I don't think the camera can pick that up, but I could see it. Um, as the screen has been on for some time, it gets a bit brighter. So it does take time for the um, cold cathode backlights to warm up. And we can wake up the box here and looks like Scotty Kilmer posted a video and a whole bunch of other stuff here. You know, and I can go ahead and watch different uh, YouTube channels and videos and all kinds of great stuff like that. I have a keyboard as well. So if I go over to search, I can now just type in stuff like that. Like I searched turning on the heat earlier today. And that's an old one. And it was 2021, 2022. Video on the heating system, an old video turning off the heat, stuff like that. Let's, uh, let's go to this one. It's going to be an ad. And another ad. Our teams help each... Sadly, it is time once again to put the heat on. I don't look forward to this every year. It's, uh, it's old. It leaks. We had a leak start last year. You can see that black, rusty looking stuff on the floor. That's new from last year. Very minor. Uh, the gaskets there don't look good. So that's that, pretty much. So I got all my remotes and uh, stuff like nice. that. And we can go back down where I leave it on the descriptions page. And that's that. Uh, in a bit, I'll show you the keyboard that I have. Uh, we'll go and switch. What are you gonna do about it? I mean, this is whatever's on cable TV. I don't even know what channel it's on right now. Are you gonna tell, Curtis? It's not my business to tell. Okay, well, you it says ABC. But I don't even know what channel it's on. It's got a great picture. Even to this day, is what it has. It's uh, it's pretty good, really. We'll go ahead and mute that. Um, let me see if I can go to. Yeah, a blank a blank HDMI input, and the menu. We'll go through that. External inputs. Video 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, HDMI, PC, and then you can edit the labels, which I haven't done. We'll return analog favorites. You can set that for your analog TV. Your digital favorites, so it has a uh, ATSC tuner as well. Then there's an analog thing. And then you can go back into that and go to your digital, which I don't have anything hooked up to. 
no digital channels were found. And uh, here's the video input. We'll go back. Unfortunately, you have to cycle through and wait for each one to come up. There's no way to speed through this. I guess you could go into the menu and, and do that. Uh, video 6 is what I wanted. No good. Let's see if I could do that. Okay, so there's a faster way. And then we can go down into settings, which is what you really want to see. Uh, there's a lot in here. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. Um, seems a little washed out on the camera, but it'll have to do because that's all I got. Target inputs, current input, picture mode, standard. So, I don't know. We'll leave it at current input. There's standard, vivid, or custom. Standard is fine. You shouldn't run it at vivid. Backlight, picture, brightness, color hue, color temperature, cool or neutral. Sharpness, noise reduction. Advanced settings, which are only available in custom mode. Okay, I don't know how you get to custom mode. I, I kind of sort of set this up a bit. Okay, so the target inputs is for the current input, so you could set different audio and video settings for the different inputs, or apply it to all. Sound mode, dynamic, standard, or custom. Treble bass, balance, steady sound, which sort of smooths out the louder and softer parts. Surround, BBE, I don't know what that is. And this allows you to set your video mode, wide zoom, normal, full zoom. It's set on that for whatever reason and it works, so that's where we leave it. Auto mode, 4x3 default, display area, horizontal center, vertical size, language, closed caption, info banner, uh, blah blah, timer settings, power saving, okay, light sensor, it has a light sensor built in that will automatically brighten and darken the picture depending on the ambient light in the room. Quiet power on. I don't remember what that does. You can look up the book for this. It's out there. I have it. I read it at one time. I don't remember information. Okay. <laughs> That's all it's got. And this is for PC input. Wide mode, reset, auto adjustment, phase, pitch, horizontal center, vertical center, power management, favorite channels, auto program, show high channels, label channels, digital setup, and that's pretty much it. There's somewhere in here, there's a way to um, set the date and time and god if i only could remember how to do any of that i i haven't the slightest clue where any of that was anymore it, it's just been a long long time since i've been in this menu but it's got a lot there let's set this back to the youtube uh that's the wrong input this one because now we can uh, go back. I don't know why that's there. We'll go back and I can show you the power on hours of this. By the way, the mouse pointer is there because I have a keyboard and mouse. So that's kind of neat. Makes it a lot easier. So to do this, first of all, we'll power the TV off. It has to be off. And it's going to click. You have to wait for it.
and now we hit on the remote display 5 volume up power and here we go oh blast the autofocus on the camera did not want to cooperate I just went and double checked it it says 24,211 hours and 54 minutes of power on time if you divide that out that's about a thousand and nine days or over or approximately three years total runtime turning it on once and letting it run for three years straight and the picture still looks pretty good it's certainly worn but still does pretty good so this tv is really cool because it has just about any input you could ever want or imagine you have ntsc tuning atsc tuning you have a bunch of composite inputs as video inputs component inputs you have a vga input you have your audio out i think there's probably an optical out back there somewhere also so it has it's sort of like a jack of all trades kind of thing and by the way everybody always misconstrues that mis misconstrues that they always say jack of all trades master of none but that's not the saying the saying is jack of all trades master of none but oftentimes better than master of one they always leave that part out and that's why my channel is so varied because i am sort of a jack of all trades which is better than one um the badge on it said hdmi and it's got hdmi but there's two things you need to know about that. First is that you have one HDMI input, <laughs> which is why I have the HDMI switch box on it. And there's also the uh, uh, Blu-ray player up, up top there, and there's no sense showing that. I don't have a disc to put in it right now. But uh, it's just one and the same, really. Uh, and the other thing about HDMI is that this TV will display 1080i, not 1080p. I don't remember if it shows that. Yeah, let's go through the... Uh, things here I think it says in the upper left corner there's five which takes a long time to switch to and six 1080i so this does not do 1080p but still it is a jack of all trades master of none but very much better than master of one in that regard the next key is that it's cold cathode fluorescent backlight, which you don't find anymore. And yeah, this TV is well, 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 well worn. And those backlights are well, well, well worn as well. And it takes quite a while for them to warm up. And it's maybe a bit uneven after this many years. But like I said, that old lady would, this was her life. She sat in this lazy boy and watched that TV. That's what she had, at least at the time I saw her. But, of course, at the time I saw her, she was very, very near the end of her life. She was 98 years old and was still with it mentally upstairs. She was sharp as a tack. She was really something, that lady. And... Um, I bought ginger from her and about a few weeks later she actually passed away so it's a good thing that she sold it to me because that car came in very very handy after the WIFS 2000 Camry was totaled from some inconsiderate asshole on the road but uh, that is pretty much the deal with this TV 
it's here, it works, it's pretty cool in that it has all the old school inputs and a cold cathode backlight, which means there's not as much blue light coming through it, which is pretty nice. And uh, it, it just overall has a warmer tone to it than anything else. Uh, I'm going to try to bring the camera up real, real close because you actually can see the individual pixels. Uh, I can even with my eyes that are shot, but uh, maybe the camera can do some justice for that. So I don't know if you can see it. It's probably going to go blurry when I zoom in. There it is. You can see the pixels there. The camera just happened to be at the height that Vice Grip Garage is there, so whatever. But yeah, these are just some of the channels I watch. Um, and I wanted to show you the um, keyboard I have. Yeah, here is the keyboard. This was like an Amazon special or an eBay special. Something like 10, 12 bucks, something like that. Um, where is the switch? Turn it on. It's backlit. It does red, green, or blue. And you can type. It's a very non-standard layout. You'll see it better when the backlight goes out. In fact, I'll just shut it. So this way you could see... It's kind of an odd layout where the buttons are, but they're clicky, so you always know when the key is made. It's certainly enough for something like this. I can even open my email and reply to one using this if I wanted. Plus, you have the mouse, which, of course, I shut it off now, but there's the mouse, and you can do that, and you have your left and right click over there, so that's pretty convenient as well for this Android TV box. Um, just a nice little thing for like 10, 12 bucks. I mean, you, you really can't go wrong with that. So that's pretty cool all around. So otherwise, that is going to wrap up this video on the Sony KDL-V32X BR2 cold cathode fluorescent backlit television. It's old. It's got a bunch of inputs, and although it's not up to today's standards, it's still a pretty good set, even in this day and age. And that's just totally awesome. Of course, if it died now, I'd go out and get something like a Vizio or some other no-name brand TV and put it on this thing or something, because it's, it's pretty nice, and with the sound bar below there, you know, it gets... It gets pumping a little bit, so that's kind of nice. Uh, that's going to do it, so I thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it very much. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.